بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left, where we left off last week and that was the uh, fifth uh, principle that we arrived from what the Sheikh was explaining to us. And just a brief summary or synopsis before we start the lesson. Uh, this is an important lesson regarding how we differentiate um, between the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, en- uh, and the enemies of Allah who are also, we could use a different word for them, the friends of the shaitan. So how do we differentiate between those who are truly the friends of Allah and how do we know the ones who are the sort of fraudulent types of people who claim that they are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in actual fact, they're the friends of the shaitan, the friends of Satan. So inshallah, that's what the shaykh will be discussing. So we will translate it and uh, we'll go step by step, paragraph by paragraph, inshallah. So uh, the shaykh, he says, Qala rahimahullah al-asl al-khamis وهذا أصل عظيم ومفيد جدا للمسلم والناس بحاجة ماسة لفهمه والعلم به. So the Sheikh he says, he says, and he is quoting the original author. He says, and may Allah have mercy upon him. He said, the fifth principle or the fifth foundation. And the Sheikh he goes on to say, he says, this foundation is a great and magnificent foundation and a beneficial one in that for the Muslim, and the people are in need of it. They are in dire need of it, dire need of understanding it and having knowledge of it. So it's a very important principle from the principles in this book. So the Shaykh he says, يَقُولُ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهِ بَيَانُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ لِأَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ وَتَفْرِيقِهِ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْمُتَشَبِّهِينَ بِهِمْ مِنْ أَعْدَاءِ اللَّهِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْفُجَّارِ So he goes on to say, and he quotes the original author again, as you can see in bold writing, uh, clarifying <clears throat> or where Allah clarifies to us his true friends who are his true friends and differentiating between the true friends and the false ones or the, the ones who claim that they're the friends of Allah and the ones who resemble as such um, and and knowing by that and differentiating between the the true friends and those who are the hypocrites and the sinners. <clears throat> so the Sheikh will explain what that means in more detail. He says, هذا أصل مهم يجب على المسلم أن يفهمه في ضوء كتاب الله وسنة نبيه عليه الصلاة والسلام ولعلنا نلحظ نلحظ أو نلاحظ معاشر الإخوة الطريقة المباركة ونهج السديد الذي عليه هذا الإمام في توضيحه للأمور لما أراد أن يذكر علامة العلماء وأمارة الفقهاء أورد آيات وأشار إلى أحاديث تعرف بها ومن خلالها علاماتهم ولما أراد أن يبين علامات الأولياء أولياء الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا أورد آيات أورد آيات من كتاب الله عز وجل تعرف أو تعرف من خلالها علاماتهم منبها بذلك أن الحق وأهله ودعاته إنما يعرفون من جهة دلالة كتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. <coughs> so the Sheikh he says here he says that this principle of foundation is very important and it's obligatory upon every Muslim that he understands it in the light of the Quran 
the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Shaykh, he obviously, he's, he's, he's delivering this to, uh, to his students a lesson. And he says here, he says, uh, and you know, we hope that, that we take notice of this. And he's saying it to the people in the lesson, but at the time of the, this lesson when he delivered it. <clears throat> and he says that this is a blessed way and a blessed uh, manhaj methodology <clears throat> that the the author of this book, um, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al Imam al Sheikh al Mujaddid, uh, Rahmullah, he clarified these affairs through his approach. And this approach, what was it? He said when he wanted to mention the signs of the scholars, you know, like we did last lesson, the signs of the scholars and the fuqaha, the, the scholars of understanding and the signs for them and how do we understand who they are and how do we know their signs. Then the Sheikh says, what did the original author bring? He brought evidences from the Quran and he brought evidences from the Sunnah to, and, you know, so that we can identify these scholars. And likewise, the same way he will do today as well when the Sheikh explains uh, uh, this uh, principle, the fifth principle that uh, the Sheikh, as is always, and people who are familiar with uh, the original, the author's books, that they're always based on the Quran and the Sunnah. They're always evidence-based. There's no stories or I heard this and I tried tested this out or any of that kind of thing. <clears throat> or I had a dream. There's none of this. It's from the Quran and Sunnah, always. And that's how it should be. <clears throat> and we all should follow that principle in whenever we um, whenever we come across a thing that's connected to our religion, then we should ask, what does Allah say about and what does the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say about and how did the Sahaba, his companions understand that affair so that we can be upon that light and, light and guidance as well and so we can stay away from uh, erring and making mistakes as best as we can. <clears throat> so then the Shaykh goes on to say in the next paragraph, he says, So he just repeats the original author's uh, first line, which we read in the early paragraph here, so I won't repeat that. So he continues explaining, he says, وهو كتاب عظيم جدا ذكر فيه ما يميز به بين ولي الله وولي الشيطان ومن ومن لم يميز خدعه أولياء الشيطان وغروه وصر وصرفوه عن دين الله تبارك وتعالى. So the Sheikh brings an extra benefit for us and turns our attention to. He says that the the friends of Allah they have their signs which are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. And likewise the the friends of the shaitan, they are also who claim that they... So the friends of the shaitan, in actual fact, they are the friends of shaitan. So this is the other group. The friends of the shaitan, but they claim that they are the friends of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they're not. Their signs have also been mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah to help us identify and stay away from them and keep on the straight path. Then the shaykh mentions... And he mentions another scholar, he mentions uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy upon him, that he authored a book, he authored a book, a work that he did. Um, I don't know if it's, I think it may be available in English, I'm not sure. Uh, but the book is called The Difference, The Difference Between the Friends of Ar-Rahman, hey, the Friends of Allah and the Friends of the Shaitan. The Difference Between the Friends of Allah or the Friends of Ar-Rahman, which is one of the Names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, And the friends of the shaitan And I think I think that's available in English So if it's worth reading It's worth searching for that book online There probably will be a PDF online You should read that book It's a very good book And it'll help, you, it'll help us further Because the Shaykh will explain this uh, to us But there's a, a, a clear uh, and uh, an expansive uh, explanation With regards to uh, this topic But he mentions that for our benefit And he says that in the book the uh, the the Sheikh uh, Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he basically differentiates and distinguishes between who the friends of Allah are and who the friends of Shaitan are and help to help us and the Sheikh mentions here 
as an added benefit, he mentions that really what would happen in conclusion if you if if you fail if you fail to distinguish between these two groups, the friends of Allah and the friends of the Shaitan, then if you are not clear with being able to identify them and don't have that knowledge, then you may fall into the traps of the friends of Shaitan who claim to be the friends of Allah and they are not, and they will trick you and circumvent you. Uh, and cut you off from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you actual, in actual fact, you'll be thinking that you're following the deen of Allah, but in fact, you're not. You're far away from the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Shaykh mentions that this is a book worth uh, uh, researching and looking for. I'm sure there's an English version of it. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, قَالَ يَكْفِي فِي هَذَا فِي هَذَا آيَةٌ فِي سُورَةِ آلِ إِمْرَانِ وَهِيَ, قول, وهي قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ So that's from Surah Ali Imran verse 31. Um, and he also mentions another ayah from Surah, uh, from Surah Al-Ma'idah. And he says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِهِ فَصَوْفَ يَأْتِ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ That's from Surah Al-Ma'idah verse uh, 54. Then the Shaykh also brings another ayah, and we will go through the translations in a second. And he says, وَآيَةٌ فِي سُورَةِ يُونُسِ So this is from Surah Yunus, Aiden, as well. And he says, the speech of Allah, most, the Most High, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ So that's verse 62 and 63 of Surah Yunus. So before we go on, and carry on, let's have a look at the um, translations, English meanings. So let me just pull that up. Give us one second. So the first Surah Al, Surah Al Imran, verse 31, where, um, where it says, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to mankind, if you really love Allah, then follow me, i.e. accept Islamic monotheism, follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah will love you and forgive you of your sins and Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. So that's the whole ayah. Then the next one from Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 54. Just the first, the starting of it. O oh, you who believe, whoever from among you turns back from his religion, Islam, Allah will bring a people whom he will love and they will love him. So that's that part of that ayah that we've read. And then the next one was Surah Yunus, Yunus 62-63. No doubt, verily, the old year of Allah, those who believe in the oneness of Allah and fear Allah much, abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which he has forbidden, and love Allah much, perform all kinds of good deeds which he has ordained. That's a comprehensive um, meaning of the word uh, old year or wali. Okay? So, no fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. Then the ayah 63, those who believed in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, and used to fear Allah much by abstaining from evil deeds and sins and by doing righteous deeds. So, so this is a description of the awliya of Allah, yeah, the friends of Allah, the ones who carry out what Allah has told them to do and stay away from that which Allah has um, told them to stay away from. Uh, and there'll be an explanation as well. The Shaykh will explain towards uh, the middle or the end of the lesson. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll recap that, inshallah, uh, then. So then the Shaykh, he goes on to say, يَقُولُ رَحْمُهُ اللَّهِ يَكْفِي أَن تَعْرِفَ الْأَوْلِيَاءَ حَقًّا وَصِدْكًا مِنْ خِلَالِ هَذِهِ الْآيَاتَ ثَلَاثِ فَقَدْ فَفِيهَا كِفَايَةٌ لَكَ فِي مَعْرِفَةِ مَنْ فِي مَعْرِفَةٍ أو فِي مَعْرِفَةِ مَنْ هُوَ الْوَلِي وَمَا هِيَ عَلَامَتُهُ So then the Shaykh says that if we look at these three ayahs only, there's many, but if we look at these alone, these three that we've just looked at, he says that in actual reality and, and truthfulness, with these three ayahs that we've just had a look at, they are enough, they're sufficient for us to know who a wali is, a true wali is, and what are the wali signs, how do we know is a wali. These three are enough for us. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, so he goes, he says, فَالْعَلَامَةُ الْأُولَى So now he's going to explain these signs, yeah? Signs of them in more detail. So he says, فَالْعَلَامَةُ الْأُولَى فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ 
Ya Habibkum Allah wa Ya Firlakum Dunubakum. The ayah that we read at this, uh, just uh, a moment ago say, say, if you truly love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and will forgive your sins. I following the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeah. So the Sheikh says the first sign says alamatul ula alitiba. So he says that the first sign, the first sign, what is it? It is itiba following, following who? Following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So if you see a person following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and following the Hadith and following the way he, he wherever he commanded, he, he did, then that's itiba. And you know that that's the first sign that we're looking for. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, says, "Itiba'u Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa laqad kana ba'du ahli al-ilm yasmuna hadhi al-aya ayat al-mihna, ay anna man arada an yumtah nafsuhu fi sidqi wa quwati muhabbatihi li Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa qabla thalika muhabbatihi li Rabbil alamin." فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَوْ لِيَقِيسَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى دَوْءِ الْإِتِّبَاعِ الَّذِي إِنْدَهُ فَإِنَّهُ كُلُّ مَا كَانَ أَعْذَمِ اتِّبَاعًا وَتَمَسُّكًا بِهَدْيِ الرَّسُولِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ أَمَارَةٌ فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ أَمَارَةٌ عَلَى صِدْقِ الْمَحَبَّةِ وَكُلَّ مَا ضَعُفَ فِيهِ الْإِتِّبَاعِ فَهَذَا أَمَارَةٌ عَلَى ضَعْفِهَا أو على ضعفها فكيف يكون وليا وهو لا يتبع الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام. So then the Sheikh mentions here that this is following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as mentioned, and he also gives us an extra benefit here. This is an extra benefit for us. He says that you know the people of knowledge they call this ayah that we just read from Surah Al Maida in Kuntum Tuhibun Allah. The ayah that begins with that this ayah it's called the ayah Al Mihna, the ayah of testing. The ayah that tests the people, and what do they mean by that? So the Sheikh he mentions here. He says, so uh, whoever uh, wants to test himself in his truthfulness and his the strength of his love and the truthfulness of his, uh, truthfulness of his love to, for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and before his love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his love for the Lord of all the worlds, Allah subhanahu wa taala, then he looks and he he looks to this ayah. And he ponders over it and he uses that as a measurement upon and in the light of following the Prophet. ﷺ. Is he following? If you know, if he truly loves Allah, then he'll follow the Prophet. ﷺ. And this is a ayah that tests if you want to test yourself or anybody else, this is the ayah. And that's why the scholars call it Ayatul Mihna. It's the ayah of, uh, of testing. It tests. It's an acid test. Probably use that word in English acid test to find out whether the person. Truly loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Because if he does then he'll follow The way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The one that Allah sent to mankind Yeah And to all of the world to, to, to the, to the alameen Yeah mankind and jinn So then the shaykh says that So if you find this uh, If you find that I love the truthful love Then you know that Everything that that person follows From the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Then that's, that shows Showing is showing his signs of strength Of his iman And, and the opposite for everything that you find the person not following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and going away from that, then that shows you the weakness of that person and their Iman as well. Yeah. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, Fi ba'dil buldan yajlisu man yuz'am wa yudda'a annahum waliyun mutaki'an ala sariyatim fil masjid wa tuqam as sala wa yusalli an nas uh, so the Shaykh is going to give us some examples now to compare and contrast between a, a true wali and a, and a fake one. Yeah. So the Shaykh he says here, he says in some of in some of the countries, you find a person who's considered to be or uh, claims to be a friend or wali of Allah, and you find him, you know. Just you know, sitting on the you know the the walls inside, uh, leaning on one of the walls of the masajid, of the mosques, and the salah is being called. So you know, it's qadqamati salah, qadqamati salah. You know, the qamas being done. People are standing up to pray, and you'll find this person still leaning on the wall, and he does not pray with them. 
he's not playing with the Muslims in the masjid. He's just sitting on the wall, uh, relaxing there, whatever he's doing. The Sheikh says, where is his wilaya? Where's, where is that wilaya? Where is it? Because it's not present. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, Aina wilaya to bidun salah. He says, where is the wilaya without the prayer? If you're not pray, pray, then how can you say that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you're a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And in the, in, the, in the third ayah that we had read the English translation, there was a comprehensive uh, explanation or a meaning of what the word wali means. You know, the one who follows the commands of Allah, you know, and stays away the, from the prohibitions and does all kinds of good deeds. Then if he's not praying and doing what's ob- obligated upon him, then where's the wilaya? Um, so the Shaykh continues, he says, Oh, la yakunu aidan fil masjid, yakunu fil, sh- uh, fil shari'a, jalisan fi maka- makanin wa tuqam as-salah wa yunada laha wa la yakumu yusalli wa yudda annahu waliyun uh, min awliya illa ayna salat allati um, faradaha Allahu ala ibadihi yakulu ahadun ashkhas marartu bi baladin ma ala makanin uh, uh, um, مررت ببلد ما على مكان وإذا uh, برجل كل ما مررت جالس ما يقوم وليس به إلا جالس في مكان لا يقوم حتى أوقات الصلوات فسألت عنه فقلت من هذا قالوا سبحان الله ما تعرفه هذا ولي من أولياء الله كل الناس يشهد يشهدون له بالولاية هذا نظر هذا نظر and la yakum and la yakumu min hadha al makan abadan so let me just stop there for a second so the sheikh he goes on to say he says oh so he gives a different example a different example he says oh it's also the persons uh let's say the, the persons in the street so he's not in the masjid he's in the street sitting down in a street for example nearby a mosque say for example and you know the iqam has been given, or the adhan, as you know, as you know, the mu'zin has he's, he's saying the adhan, he's pronouncing the adhan, and he's being called to the prayer. This person, so everybody's being called to the prayer, including this person who hears it, but he does not get up and he doesn't go, and, he doesn't pray, and he claims that he is a wali, a friend of Allah from the friends of Allah. The Sheikh says, "Where is the prayer that Allah has obligated upon?" Upon his slaves, including this person, he's not prayed. So then he goes on to say, he says, a person, a person from the the people, from some some people, mentioned that that uh, um, that he passed. So so he's the, some of the person tell their story. They say, I passed. Uh, I was passing in. I was in a country and passing by. So uh, I was in uh, some random place, and I saw a man. Every time I passed by him to go and pray, he was sitting outside, he was sitting there. And he had no problem with him. He didn't have any deficiency or disability. So it it wasn't as if he was sitting down because he had a broken leg or some kind of disability. He was fine the way he looked and everything. He was sitting in a place and he he wouldn't get up. Even up until the point of the prayer times, he wouldn't get up. So he said, I asked about him. He asked somebody else about him. He said, who's this person? They said, so the, So these people, they replied, they said, Subhanallah, out of amazement. Subhanallah, don't you know him? This is a, a, a wali, a friend from the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the people testify that he is a, that he, he is a wali yeah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they explain the God, he's sitting down and he's not getting up at all and he's always sitting down because he's taking an he's taking an oath. He's taking an he's taking an oath that that he will not stand from this place ever. So then Shaykh goes and says, Fakat Yajlis fi had al Makan, you sali al Nabi Salah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a salat al Mufruda Alati if Tarada Allahu ala Ibadhi, Wam Rabiha, Wada Ila Ikamatiha, Fil Masaji Tutrak. وَيَجْلِسُ فِي هَذَا الْمَكَانِ لَا يَقُومُ مِنْهُ أَيْنُ الْوِلَايَةَ بِدُونَ الْإِتِبَاءِ يَخْتَرُ الْعَوَامِ عِنْدَهُمْ تُؤْتَى لَهُمْ بِمِثْلِ هَذِهِ الْحِكَايَاتِ يَخْتَرُ الْعَوَامِ وَيَظُنُّ فِعْلًا أَنَّ هَذَا مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ 
فولي الله المتبع علامته الاتباع وأعظم ما يكون فيه فعل الفرائض إذا ضيع الفرائض ليس من أولياء الله لا تحتاج هذه إلى مفاصلة واضحة من ضيع الفرائض فهو لم لما سواها وضيع فالولاية فالولاية لا بد فيها من فعل الفرائض. So then the Sheikh he finishes off by saying in this paragraph he says so he is he, he only sits down in that place and all he does is he he just uh, sends blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He just says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says Allah Masalli Ala Muhammad and that's all he's doing there and sitting there and does not get up. And the obligatory prayers which Allah has obligated upon his servants and commanded them with it and that and has called to its establishment, i.e. establishing the prayers in the masajid, he's leaving them off, he's leaving off, he's just sitting there. So he's going against what Allah has commanded and he sits in in in, in, in this place and he does not get up from it. The Sheikh says, where is this wilaya? Without following, i.e. following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, the Sheikh says that the general masses, they get, they, they get tricked by this. They, they are deceived by the, the likes of this. You know, you know, these kinds of stories that they hear from the people and, and what, what certain, certain types of people do. They get tricked by this, you know, when they hear it in actual fact. And, and they think that, in, in, and, and in actual fact that they think that this person who is, who is, Openly sinning, that, that's openly sinning, he's not praying, it's, it's a sin if you don't pray, yeah, as we all know. So he's not praying and then he's saying, oh, this is a wali of Allah, this is a friend of Allah and, and he's actually an open sinner, right? Uh, and people believe that th this kind of thing, th you know, they believe this uh, so-called uh, hocus pocus, uh, pocus or bumbo jumbo and they believe it and uh, they think that this person is actually a friend of Allah. And the Sheikh says here that the Wali of Allah, the true Wali of Allah, the one who is actually a Wali of Allah, a friend of Allah, is the one who follows. I, as we mentioned, uh, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, following the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and that's the sign, al itiba following. And the Sheikh says the greatest, uh, the greatest thing, or from the greatest of things or most magnificent things, are those things which are. Obligations, al faraid that are fard. So if the person loses, he, he loses out on these faraid and is not bothered with them and does not establish them and carry out these obligatory acts that he's been charged to do and been commanded to do, then he's not from the Sheikh says he's not from the Wali of Allah. He's not from the friends of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Oliya of Allah. So, so the Sheikh mentions this in this paragraph, and. He, he clarifies here that, that, you know, if somebody leaves off that, then, you know, what else after that? You know, how can the person be from the friends of Allah? Jalla so then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءَ الْوِلَايَةُ دَرَجَةً So when I mentioned earlier on about um, uh, understanding what wilaya or being a wali is, then it's of two levels. So the Shaykh explained this here now. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءَ الْوِلَايَةُ درجتان أولياء الله على درجتين بينت الدرجتان في قوله عليه الصلاة والسلام عن الله تعالى في الحديث القدسي من عاد لي وليا فقد آذنته بالحرب وما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلى إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه so let's just uh, stop there for a sec. So then the Shaykh goes on to say that um, the, the scholars, they say that the wali of Allah, there are two levels of wilaya. And, um, and that's based upon the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is hadith al-Qudusi. Um, and which we read in Arabic, and if we go to the uh, English translation, then that is where the Messenger of Allah, uh, uh, peace be upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "Allah the Exalted has said, I will declare war against him who shows hostility to a pious worship of mine, a wali, 
and the most beloved thing with which my slave comes nearer to me is what I have enjoined upon him. And my slave keeps on coming closer to me through performing optional extra deeds till I love him. Yeah, that, that's where they stopped uh, in the text. So we'll just stick to that. And the Sheikh, I think he'll, uh, yeah, we can see here at the bottom here as well on the next page uh, that it continues. So um, let's break this down. So the Sheikh, he says, so the first level, he says, Darajatu fi'l al faraid So this is the first level. And that is that you act upon the obligations, that you carry out the obligations. Alladhi yuhafidu al faraid wa yatruku al-muharramat hadha min awliya illah wa hiya darajatun fil wilaya. So he says that in explaining the first level and that's carrying out obligation, obligatory acts, it is, it is the one who preserves and carries out his um, obligations that Allah has placed upon him. And he leaves off all that which Allah has uh, forbade him to do. So all the haram, he stays away from it as well. The Shaykh says, this is from the awliya of Allah. This is from the, walis, the, the, the friends of Allah. And he says that this is uh, the first level from the two levels of wilaya. Yeah? So then the Shaykh goes on to say, A'la minha darajatan. And what's higher than it in level? Yeah? And superiority is this. And he says, Man yaf'alul. فرائد ويترك المحرمات وينافس في فعل فعل الرغائب والمستحبات وهذا معنى قوله ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبتش بها وقدمه التي يمشي عليها ولا إن سألني لو أثينه so then the Shaykh he says here and the one that's more superior to that is the one who does everything in the first level so carries out the obligatory act stay away, stays away from the haram and he competes in deeds in, in optional deeds so he competes in all that which is optional he has a choice to leave it is no problem in leaving it but he competes in the optional acts as well, doing good extra things that he's doing, aside from what Allah's obligated upon him, right? <clears throat> and and then the Sheikh says that that's the meaning of what we just read in Arabic in green here in the highlight text, and that's the rest of the hadith. So let's go back and have a look at that. So um, it says, and my slave keeps on coming closer to me through performing nawafil. I, I, I optional prayers or doing extra deeds beside what is obligatory till I love him. When I love him, I become his hearing with which he hears, his seeing with which he sees, his hand with which he strikes, and his leg with which he walks. And if he asks something from me, I give him it. And if he asks my, for my protection and refuge, I protect him. So, th so, so this is what that is, and that's a great station, you know, to reach, to aspire to be in. Um, and just to clarify. That uh, just to explain that sometimes people get confused with this uh, this bottom bo uh, last part of the hadith about I become his seeing, I become his walking. That doesn't mean that Allah is inside you. That does not mean because if you read the first part of the hadith, you will understand the last part of it, and it means uh, with uh, with what is understood and the correct understanding is that if you uh, as Allah says at the uh, at the end of through the hadith through this hadith that if you ask Allah for something, He will give it to you. And you know, if you if you if you ask Allah for protection, He will protect you. That Allah is with you, and you've got that special station with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that will protect you. And if you ask Him for something, you'll get it. Yeah, and 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 like that it doesn't mean that Allah is inside that person. He's walking, he's become his leg. No, it does not mean that. So just to be clear on that, inshallah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say. Um, هذه علامته يفعل الفرائض أما شخص يجلس ولا يصلي ثم يقول من حولي من حوله هذا ما تعرفه هذا ولي من أولياء الله ثم يقولون أيضا لو كان عندك مشكلة اجلس عنده بدون ما 
تكلمه وهو يعرف مشكلتك وهو يلقي في قلبك الدواء الدواء لها هذا ولي الأوام مساكين يخدعون بمثل هذا الكلام ثم إذا قيل للأوام فلان جرب وفلان جرب وفلان جربت ومثل هذه السوالف لا تسألوا عن رقدهم على مثل هذا زرافات زرافات ووحدانا ووحدانا وهذا الضياع وأصبحت المقاييس في الولاية مثل هذه المقاييس الفاسدة أما المقاييس التي في الكتاب والسنة لا تجدهم يورجون عليها ولا يقفون عندها So then the Sheikh goes on to say that this is the, this is, uh, the sign of the Wali. He, you know, he carries out the obligatory acts and you know, stays away from the Ram, as, as the Sheikh explained earlier. Then he goes on to say, as for a person who sits, who's sitting and does not pray, as in the previous example, in the uh, two paragraphs ago, um, then he says, Uh, and then the people uh, around him say, oh, you don't know this person. This is a friend of Allah. He's from the friends of the friends of Allah. He's, the wali, he's, from, he's from the wali of, awliya of Allah. And then they say also, if you, had a, if you have a problem, sit with him. Don't speak to him. Just sit with him silently and he will know your problem. And he will, he will know your, your ailment. And he will uh, place in your heart some medicine, a cure. And they'll say these kinds of things. The Sheikh says in the middle, can this be a wali? As we know from the Quran and Sunnah, this is not a wali. Of course it's not. Um, so then the Sheikh says that the, you know, the, 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 the general masses, you know, in, in this situation, in these situations, you know, they get fooled. You know, they get fooled by this and they get tricked by the, these types of people and these kinds of, uh, uh, these kinds of, speeches that people give and talk and spread. Uh, uh, and and then also, it, it may be said to the people, to, to the general masses, oh, you know, from another angle, oh, uh, Fulan, such and such, has tried this. Such and such, she tried it as well, and it helped her, for example. Right? And they'll come with, the, you know, with, with this kind of speech as well. Um, and And all these, like, you know, trickery and all this stuff that's far away from the uh, the Quran and Sunnah. And this is, the Sheikh says, is all of this is lost. And the Sheikh says that the measurement, the measurement has become such that the uh, people are using, the, the yardstick that they use is the one, that's the incorrect one where the way he's mentioned here. And, and it's uh, the corrupt, uh, the yardstick, the measurement they're using is corrupt. And in fact, people have stayed away from the Quran and the Sunnah in, uh, in understanding what a wali of Allah is, a friend of Allah actually is. So they don't come with the Quran, the evidences from the Quran and the evidences from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to use that as a measurement to see if this person, as we've done in this lesson, as the Sheikh explained, gave us examples. We use the Quran and Sunnah as a yardstick and we realize which person is Uh, a truly a wali of Allah and which one is uh, uh, is not a wali of Allah and in fact in reality is a wali of the shaitan of Satan so the shaykh mentions that in this paragraph so we'll continue so then the shaykh he continues he says فَإِذَنْ عَلَامَةُ الْوَلِيَ الْإِتِبَاءَ وَالْإِقْتِدَاءَ بِالرَّسُولَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَبِسُنَّتِهِ وَمِنْ أَعْذَمِ مَا يَكُونُ فِي ذَلِكَ الصَّلَاةُ كَانَ بَعْدُ الْمُتَقَدِّمِينَ إذا أراد أن يذهب إلى مكان ليتلقى العلم عن شخص يذهب وينظر في صلاته إذا وجده من أهلها والمحافظين عليها اطمأن لعلمه وإلا إن كان مضيعا للصلاة فهو لم لما سواه سواها أضي ولا هذا في الإسلام لمن ضي الصلاة أو لمن ضي الصلاة قال بعض السلف من أراد أن يعرف وزن الإسلام عنده فلينظر إلى وزن الصلاة. So let's just stop there for a sec. Then the Sheikh says he goes so he says therefore uh, a sign of a wali is following and following and taking the Prophet as the role model and following the way of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
and from the greatest of those things of those things to be followed is the prayer is the prayer and the sheikh mentions from the early generations of the muslims some of the early generations of the muslims if they wanted to go and seek knowledge from a particular person the first thing they would do is they would observe that person's prayer if they found him from its people the people of the prayer as in praying and were and preserved his prayer then they would feel content and feel at rest and take knowledge from him then the sheikh says and if they found him to be one who was not there not praying not preserving his prayer you know one to be one who does not pray etc then they would leave him and you know they would leave him they would not take knowledge from that person and the sheikh says that there's no portion or no take for that person in islam the one who leaves off his prayer who makes his prayer lost you know he's losing every time the the prayer he misses the prayers for example he's not preserving his prayer then the sheikh says that some of the salaf the predecessors they said whoever um, if uh, he says whoever wants to know the weight of a person's islam uh, that's with him, with that person then look to the weight of his prayer that's what they used to say this is what they said so the sheikh continues he says as-salatu mizan li islam ash-shakhs idha kana shakhsun la yusalli wa la yashhad as-salaa ma al-jama'a hadha waliyun min awliya ash-shaytan yajlisu fi qariyatin fi qariyat at-tariq wa laysa bihi illatun wa lam yamna'uhu wa lam yamna'uhu mardun maradun wa lam yamna'uhu udrun illa mithlu hadhi da'wa al-batila laysa min awliya illa so let's just stop there so the sheikh says that the prayer it is you know it's a, it's a wings you know it weighs it shows you the weight of that person's islam uh, 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 it's a, you can use that as a measurement as we've seen uh, so the sheikh says if a person if a person does not uh, does not pray and does not uh, uh, he does not pray in you don't even see him in the jamaa either in uh, either in the congregational prayer then the sheikh says that this is from this is from the friends of shaitan he's you'll see this kind of person sitting in the alleyways or the areas in in the pathways uh uh and you know the pavements for example on the sides sidewalks and he has no pro- as in the previous example has no problem with his legs he's just sitting there and nothing pre- uh, there's no uh, ailment that prevents him Uh, or no excuse that he has uh, and you see that these types of people calling to their falsehood and they are not from the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're not from the awliya of Allah then the shaykh he continues he says wal nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi akhir hayatihi fi maradihi kashaf as-sitr wa ra'a as-sahaba sufufan ya ummuhum abu bakr as-siddiq uh, رضي الله عنه فتحلل وجهه فرحا عليه الصلاه والسلام من من هذا المنظر العظيم تحلل وجهه والناس يراهم صفوف يصلون في المسجد خلف خير اصحابه ابو بكر رضي الله عنه هذه الولايه 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 في الصلاه في عباده الله واتباع الرسول عليه الصلاه والسلام هذه علامه هذه علامه واضحه بينت في القران لا تحتاج الى بيان لكن مع ذلك الامر التبس على كثير من العوام والجهال واصبح بعض العوام لا ينظر الى هذه العلامات ليقيس وانما ينظر ينظر الى طول الامامه لا ينظر الى هذه العلامه وانما ينظر في معرفه الولايه الى طول الامامه او الزي او الشكل واصبح بعضهم بلاية نوء الولاية نوء من اللباس ونوء من الزي معين ونوء من من الحركات معينة تفعل إذا وجدت أصبحت مقياسا so 
Let's just stop there. <clears throat> then the Shaykh, he says, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, towards the end of his life, when he was ill, and when he saw the Sahaba, um, uh, you know, standing up in the rows, getting ready to pray, and praying, and Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, uh, he, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told him to lead um, the Muslims in prayer. And you know, he was happy when he saw that, alayhi salatu wasalam. And, and, th- and this is, the Shaykh says that this is a great thing that, you know, that, that, that we, when we discuss this, that we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was happy, you know, obviously with, the, with uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu leading the Muslims and the Muslims praying in the, in the mosques. Uh, uh, you know, obviously they're praying behind the, from the best of his companions, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The Shaykh says, this is wilaya. This is what wilaya is. And, and he says, wilaya is in, in prayer, in worshipping Allah, in following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says that this is the sign, a clear sign that has been clarified in the Quran. It does not, re- it doesn't require any further clarification. You know, it's clarified in the Quran. <clears throat> it's clear. There's no need for it's clear enough, you know. But the Shaykh says, however, with how ha- with us having said that, the affair, this affair of Wilaya has has kind of um it's become it's become cloudy for people to understand it. They, they don't see it clearly. Uh, uh, m- from many of the people, the general people, including the ignorant ones. And it's become that some of the uh, g- the general folk they don't look to the signs to you know from the Quran and the Sunnah to use as a yardstick to see who actually is a wali. Rather, they look at the length of the person's imama. So you know, like the head, you know, the so like the turban. Now you know we wear the turban and then long with the long flap of the back. You know, they're looking at how long or big is the person's um, uh, turban, for example, or they'll be looking at the person's uniform, how he looks. You know, is how look how is he looking religious, etc. And other than that, uh, and that has become the yardstick incorrectly, erroneously, and you know this is how the affairs have become and turned over on its head, sadly, for many of the people. So then the Sheikh uh, he mentions the ayah that he mentioned earlier on in the beginning of the lesson, and what did he say to us? He says, "Qul in kuntum tuhibun Allaha, fatabiuni yuhbibkum Allah." And he reminds us again that say if you truly love, uh, if you truly, uh, uh, if you truly love Allah, then follow me. I follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah will love you, yeah, and forgive you your sins. The Sheikh says, "هذه لا تقاس بهذا ميزان الواضح لا يقاس به ولا يميز من من خلاله من هم من هم أولياء الله." So the Sheikh says that this is a clear from the Quran. This verse is clear. To be used as a yardstick, as your measurement, as our measurement, to see if a person is truly a friend of Allah or not. But he says many of the people don't use this, and they don't use it to distinguish right from wrong, the right from wrong. Yeah. So then the Sheikh says, "Thumma amanu man minkum an dinihi yuhibbuhum." وَيُحِبُّونَهُ أَذِلَّةٍ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عِزَّةٍ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ يُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَخَافُونَ لَوْمَةَ لَائِمْ So let's get the full, we did read the beginning part of this ayah, but let's get the full. So this is, let me just have a look. From Surah Al-Ma'idah. Okay, let's read the whole, uh, let's read the translation of this. O oh, you who believe, Whoever from among you turns back from his religion, Islam, Allah will bring a people whom he will love and they will love him. Humble towards the believers, stern towards the disbelievers, fighting in the way of Allah and never afraid of the uh, never afraid of the blame of the blamers. That is the grace of Allah which he bestows on whom he wills and Allah is all sufficient for his creatures, needs, all knower. So then the Shaykh, he explains, the, uh, it is a tafsir, Explanation of this ayah, and he says to us, he says, number one here, he says, Adillatun alal mu'mineen, yani fi kulubihim rahmatun lil mu'mineen wa mahabbatun lil khair lahum wa nus wa dua wa ta'awun ma'hum alal khair. So the first 
part of the ayah they explain it says adhillatun adhillatun al-mu'mineen and it says meaning what does it mean it says in their hearts they have mercy for the mu'mineen for the believers they have mercy for one another you know their uh, their hearts uh, you know they they they, uh, they love good for for one another advising one another you know uh, you know calling one another to to that which is right and cooperating upon goodness point number 2 aizatu aizatun alal kafirin being stern towards the disbelievers so the sheikh he mentions he explains he says qulubuhum fi aizatun wa man'a that they, you know in in the hearts of the muslims they have this you know strength and power yeah and might uh, and also uh, they have they also uh, have this hatred uh, this hatred and dislike for the disbelievers and the enemies of Allah jalla wa ala tabarak wa ta'ala that because of what what those people are upon the disbelief they're upon the falsehood that they're upon that we we ha- that have this and this is how the believer is yeah point 3 wa fihim aidan al jihad fi sabil lahi li ila kalimat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa wa nusrat dinihi point number 3 and in them also is a, a jihad when it becomes applicable for the muslim uh, um then you know there's a ability to do jihad and want to do that in the path of allah uh, to raise uh, the uh, the uh, the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above everything else and to aid the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala point number 4 wa fihim annahum لا يخافون في الله لوم تلائم في بيان الحق وإضاحه ودعوة إليه ونشره. So point number four and a very important point as well that in their hearts, in them, in the believers, in the Muslims, is that they don't fear the the blamers, the blame of the blamers. They don't fear the blame of the blamers. And they and they stand up and they clarify the truth and they make it clear for the people and they call the people towards it and they spread the 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 truth and they don't fear the blame of the blame or this person's going to say this or somebody else might say this and that's why I'm not going to do it no they they don't fear the blame of the blame they put their trust in Allah and they they carry out their responsibilities and they spread the truth you know and and that's their characteristics yeah point number 4 so then the sheikh continues on He says, مثل هذه إذا وجدت هذه العلامات على أن أن للإنسان أن للإنسان من أولياء الله تبارك وتعالى. So the Sheikh says, if we find these signs that we just the Sheikh has explained to us, then indeed you should know that this person is from the أولياء of Allah, the friends of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh says, ثم ختم بعلامة نخيرة في قوله تبارك تبارك وتعالى ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون ثم ذكر علامة ثم ذكر علامتهم تبارك وتعالى قال الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون العلماء رحمه رحمهم الله تقولون إذا إذا جمعت بين الإيمان والتقوى في آية واحدة أو في نص واحد يكون الإيمان يتناول العقائد الصحيحة وفعل الأوامر والتقوى البعد عن العقائد الزائفة الباطلة وترك النواحي فالإيمان اعتقاد الأمر الصحيح والعمل بالطاعات التي دل عليها الكتاب والسنة وتقوى البعد عن العقائد الباطلة و واتقاؤها وايضا اتقاء المحرمات وما نهى الله عنه تبارك وتعالى وياتي في مقدمه ذلك الشرك بالله so then in this um, paragraph the sheikh says then then the uh, uh, then uh, the final sign of uh, the, from from the signs of uh, the awliya the friends of allah is in the in speech of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala that we read in Arabic and um, that's from surah to yunus so if we go back to that and have a look at the translation again we'll see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says no doubt verily the awliya of Allah i.e. those who believe in the oneness of Allah and fear Allah much abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which he has forbidden and love Allah much perform all kinds of good deeds which he has ordained no fear shall come upon them nor shall they grieve those who believe in the oneness of Allah Islamic polytheism 
and you used to fear Allah much by abstaining from evil deeds and sins and by doing righteous deeds. So then the Shaykh, he mentions this to us and he says that the ulama, the scholars, may Allah have mercy upon them, they say regarding this, they say that if, if you find Iman and Taqwa like this together in one ayah, in one verse, then it is, it, it, it consists of Iman. And it, it is referring to Al-Iman and, uh, and the correct Aqeedah. And carrying out um, uh, the, uh, the commandments that we've been commanded with. And the Sheikh says, At-Taqwa, what is it? He says, At-Taqwa, it's <clears throat> being far from all the falsehood, all the false beliefs and creeds and staying away from all that which Allah has uh, prohibited us from. And he says, Al-Iman, it is belief yeah, in the correct creed yeah, and following and carrying out the act the righteous deeds that which which the Quran and the Sunnah have demonstrated to us of which those deeds are to do the criterions in the Quran and the Sunnah regarding that and then he says at taqwa is far away from all the false beliefs and f and being fearful from falling into those things and staying away from those things and protecting yourself from those false all those types of falsehood and also staying away from all that which Allah has made haram for us so whatever Allah has prohibited, uh, prohibited us from doing, then we stay away from it. <clears throat> and the Sheikh says here in the last sentence of this paragraph, he says, وَيَأْتِ فِي مُقَدِمَةِ ذَلِكَ الشِّرْكِ And the Sheikh says, and after mentioning all of this, the first of those things that we should stay away from is shirk, as mentioned in previous books for the brothers who were in those lessons or have listened to those lessons, staying away from shirk, the 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 most the, the biggest crime that you can commit and falling into it will cause you to leave the fold of Islam. So understanding what shirk is is important to stay away from it. And likewise, understanding what tawheed is, so you so you can be on the right path. So then we'll continue. Let's we only have three minutes left. So uh, I think what we'll do is we'll um, we'll stop here. Inshallah, I'll just highlight this. We'll stop here. And we'll continue next week so that we don't go beyond an hour with Allah Ta'ala and hopefully we can finish this principle. Uh, yeah, we're here. There was only another page to go. So we can finish that next week and then we'll carry on and then we're on the final principle and then we'll complete this book. So as you can see, we have another five pages to read. So we don't have much to go, inshallah. So we'll stop there. <clears throat> Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh